news you can use today. Today, uh, today's we're going to focus on just one thing, actually. Um, and this is a CNBC article from Friday afternoon, last Friday. Title of the article is a how the housing market stands at a tipping point after a stunningly successful year during the pandemic. And there's some key points here I want to emphasize. One year after the COVID-19 crisis shut down and warped so much of American life, things are still unpredictable, but the outlook isn't bright for housing. Um, it looks, in fact, it looks like a perfect storm for correction. That's the point of the whole article here. There's four key factors. Home prices are overheated, mortgage rates are rising, and the supply of homes for sale is anemic. Additionally, consumer confidence in housing is falling. Um, let me read a little bit from this because then we'll talk about it. <clears throat> home prices, currently home prices are overheated. Mortgage rates are rising. Supply of homes for sales and anemic and consumer confidence in housing is falling. Pandemic related mortgage bailouts are set to expire. In addition to this year ago, home sales ground to a halt at the beginning of COVID. No one wanted to buy, sell, or even enter a home given all the physical and economic uncertainty. But just a few months later, the housing market skyrocketed primarily because people wanted more room in their house uh, for things like an in-home office, and they also wanted more outdoor room. And so we saw the migration go from cities to suburbs, suburbs to rural areas. Um, the, the problem that we've got right now is they've that we've spurred as the government, we've spurred on the economy, and that has created the opportunity for the Fed to raise interest rates. They do this so that they can pay back the money that they've artificially created to pay back other loans that they put out. Um, and that has dramatically choked off the refi market for one. Number two, it's also hurting the housing market because it really creates a, a damp a dampening of availability of credit out there. And you'd be surprised, uh, just a small amount. Um, when rates went from 2.75 to three and a quarter, only a half a point change is where we are now. You're looking at a loss of $23,250 in spending with a mortgage. So in other words, you can make the same income you could have the same debt to uh, debt to income ratio. You can have all the other things be the same, but the fact that the interest rate is just raised a half a point, it choked off basically 10% of the price of the average home in the United States, which was about $235,000. Um, and, and that's going to plunge prices at some point. Uh, the housing supply, especially new, new houses, first time home buyer houses is still low. It's never really recovered from the Great Recession. And uh, it's predicted to continue to be um, precautionary is the, the way that it's being deemed. The houses, uh, the house builders are building, but they're not overbuilding. They're not going crazy. They're building at just a small enough level to support their ongoing growth. So uh, affordability is weakened substantially, especially in the first time home buyer markets. Prices have risen primarily at the low end of the market. Um, and there's going to be a, a just supply demand thing that could keep up the prices. But the fact that interest rates go up is going to actually smack the demand uh, down as well. And so we're going to see um, even CNBC now, which, which tends to be a little uh, late to the table in terms of predictions, is predicting a housing correction. What's that mean for you guys? Housing correction means there will be less affordability. Uh, there'll be more people wanting to buy who can't afford to buy. There'll also be a larger number of sellers um, who can't, or homeowners who can't afford their payments, which creates them, puts them into a selling environment. And, uh, you know, overall, it's, it's good for those of us in the housing business if you know how to play it. And so, and that's one of the things that um, we're going to be talking about with our equity buyout clinic starting this afternoon, tonight, um, how you can take advantage of that. But you can take advantage, and, and I, ex I would expect you all should be looking to leverage that information to more deals for yourself. Remember, the, the demand hasn't dampened. There still is a huge amount of people who want to own a home just the circumstances under which they can afford a home is changing dramatically. And so there'll be a, 
you know, at, once supply equalizes or it be, gets equilibrium with the demand and then supply starts exceeding, you've got what we call a buyer's market at that point. Um, I expect we'll see that here in the next year or two, depending on how everything's managed. So that's, that's it for news you can use today. Let's